Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. I'm Kulikin Dragoon, and in the last episode, we made our way back to the Seraphan Fortress. We managed to uh, convince our ever so friendly. We managed to get ourselves into the second time stream chamber. We ended up here. Not where we wanted to be. And so now we are going to... Alright. So now we're here and are trapped here in the future. Now we're going to try and find our way around here and eventually get back to the time of Janos Aldrin. And hopefully he can give us some answers about what's going on. So now we're just kinda gonna wander around here. See if there's anything that has changed that we can really make use of. <laughs> Alrighty. Just gotta keep wandering around here. Hopefully, we'll find somebody. Oh! oh I got shot. give you much hope for the output of Nalskoth at this point, do they? The first game, all we really see is a desolate wasteland, and we see something very nice when we go back in time. But now we're thrown into the future, and it's all rainy and dreary, and the first thing that happens when we get here is we're attacked by monsters. Ooh, sword, give me, I want sword, give me the sword, give me, 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 give me the sword, give me the sword, mine, mine, mine. Wants it. are burning even though it's raining. What a wonderful world. I don't think we're going to get any farther than that. I'm trying to follow the path this way. So then, clearly, we must now take a shortcut of sorts. Oh, 
things do is defend themselves. It's, it's very much a pain in the rear. Good, give me your soul. It's up to the most annoying thing in video games. You should hit. Whoa, no, no. I said jump. <laughs> Brazil's not listening to me again. Alright, let's try this again. And to the other. There we go. Now oh, we're back, baby. Or at least mostly back. It takes forever to kill some of these guys, though. Now we're back here. The doors. To the pillars of fate. Or just not Scoth, depending on how you want to look at it. These were the pillars so familiar to my blighted eyes. But now that I have begun to learn their true significance, I regarded the pillar's destruction with a new, enlightened sense of horror. And I question now whether Cain's simple refusal, his mere ambition, could truly have caused such devastation. I felt that some darker influence was at work here. As I approached, I discerned the spirit of Ariel, bound here now for more than a century. Forever am I bound, hope abandoned, my spirit tethered to this place. What destroyed the circle could not touch me, for I was newly dead and beyond harm's reach. I alone was spared the descent into madness, and Cain alone was spared the pain of death. When Nefractor's poison seized Cain even in the safety of the womb, much more than just his destiny was lost. All of Norsgoth lost balance. Consider us now, both of us less than we once were. I, pure but insubstantial, and Cain, terribly real, but corrupted. Your imprisonment here has deranged you, spirit. You fixate on Cain because you believe he is the tether that binds you here. We both know he is not the author of your agony. The pillars were subverted by dark forces, invited by the Guardians themselves. The more I learn of your circle, the more I see a tangle of nested manipulations. Cain handed them their victory. They sought to topple the pillars, and he was their willing instrument. Or was he their unwilling pawn? 
Would it blunt your wrath to know that Cain's dilemma was calculated to bring the pillars down, regardless of the choice he made, and that the devastation would have been even greater had he chosen the path you would prescribe for him? Oh, you are a subtle, deceitful creature. But your clever arguments do not absolve Cain. He must die for the pillars to be restored. There is no other way. Then consider this more ominous possibility. What if Cain's death does not restore the pillars? Consider that it may simply be too late, that this world may be beyond redemption, and that you may be bound here eternally. me, demon. You can see that I am captive here. Show me some mercy. Like the mercy you showed your fellow guardians when you set Cain on them? Or the mercy you showed Cain when you kept him ignorant of his destiny while you used him as the scourge of the circle? Or perhaps like the mercy you showed your beloved Nepraptor when you made him Cain's first kill? You are cruel. Why do you torment me? I'm merely looking for answers, Ariel. Ah, very well. I'll leave you in peace. But know this about you and this purgatory from which you long to escape. You're merely at the threshold. So, once again, we see Ariel. We saw her in the first game at the Pillars. That won't take place, or that meeting won't take place for another, my guess is, somewhere over 1700 years, maybe. At this point, I don't think, anyway. I don't think Cain has revived Razan and his brothers. Of course, could be wrong with that. So that whole thing was basically <laughs> Raziel asking about the uh, events of Blood Omen, the first game, and how Ariel Spectre had Cain kill all of the members of the circle like I've told you guys before. But we kind of learned there, if you haven't played the game, that she kept him woefully ignorant of the fact that he was the balanced guardian and was meant to be the final sacrifice. Kinda of stinks for him. Now I gotta fight that demon again. This is gonna be a pain in the tuchus. I dodged that one. I am so gonna die again. <laughs> <laughs> souls! I need some souls here. Oh, come on. I've got three of these little buggers chasing him. There we go. 
Okay, well, at least I took those guys down. Now I'm back to the big guy. I have a hard time believing this is going to do anything. Yeah, I didn't really expect anything. Even here? <laughs> There's no place sacred from these monsters. And I know I'm probably gonna have to fight them or run. Alright, hold on a sec, guys, hold on. Alright, guys, sorry about that. The game crashed on me again. Uh, at least I stopped recording before it actually officially crashed. <laughs> but now, alright, we can get back into this and keep going. decision to preserve his own life, even when it meant sacrificing the whole world. This is the fate of Nosgoth, as long as Cain remains alive. An ironic condemnation, given this guilty scene. One would think you'd torn down the pillars single-handedly. What are you trying to obliterate as you drag your loathsome body through this chamber? 
And why, as Nosgoth descends into madness and misery, do you appear to thrive? Things in this world I am learning are rarely what they seem. You, apparently, are no exception. I am the engine of life, the source of Nosgoth's very existence. I am the hub of the wheel, the origin of all life, the devourer of death. Or maybe you're just hungry. Could it be as simple as that? Wouldn't that be poetic irony? The great adversary of the vampires turns out to be the biggest parasite of them all. Do not test my patience, Raziel. I made you, and I will unmake you if I become so inclined. As your agent, I am beyond death. There are fates worse than death, Raziel. Oh, I see you now as you truly are. A cancer. A spooling parasite burrowed deep in the heart of this world. Go now. Play out your pitiful rebellion and take your place among the destroyed, the used, and the damned. But know this. You are mine for eternity. You have always been, and will always be, my soul reaver. Alright guys. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and end off the episode here. So in the next episode, guys, we'll be moving forward seeing if we can find a way to go back to the top of Yano's Odrin. So I will see you guys then. Take care.